As far as I can determine, there are three types of sewing patterns. Printed, PDF, and self-drafted. Why must I be like this? Why must I have the giant skirts? One of the questions that I get asked most often is how I store all of those different types of patterns. So I thought I would show you today the different methods that I use for keeping track and keeping organized with the many, many, many patterns that I own. First up, my printed patterns. This is definitely my favorite type of pattern. I would much rather have a printed pattern than a PDF. And whenever possible, I will buy the printed pattern, even if that includes having to pay for shipping, because I, as I say, I just prefer having the physical, tangible thing. That is a double-edged sword because I also trace my patterns. Patterns in the UK tend to be fairly expensive. The big four patterns, the, you know, the Simplicity, New Look, McCall's Vogue, Butter Nomi patterns are usually very expensive to buy in the UK. There are clubs like Sew Direct where you can sign up and you get 40% off of new patterns when they get released and a new pattern every year but there's a membership fee included in that. Lots of the UK stockists will have sales but you can never quite get them as inexpensively as you can if you buy them directly from America. The way I get around the cost and shipping is I will get my order over $75 from simplicity.com and that way they offer free international shipping. So I, I write down the patterns that I want from every new release and when I get over that $75 threshold I will order from Simplicity and as long as the order is under uh, about £113 I think it is there is no import fees to pay either and Simplicity do sales so frequently that it just works out the best value for me to order my patterns like that but I appreciate that I probably order a lot more patterns than most people do although I haven't placed a Simplicity order for about two years now so I think I'm about due. But that's my way of getting the kind of big four patterns over in the UK. I also probably have about, I'm not sure, it's not quite half, it maybe is half of my pattern stash are indie patterns. And again, if at all possible, I do like to have the printed version of those, although a lot of indie patterns are going over to PDF only. So my patterns are stored in some Billy bookcases that I got from Ikea. I used to store them all in the Nedbury CD towers, which are slightly slimmer than the Billy bookcases if you only have a few patterns or if you are short on space that's a really great way to store them. I've been able to swap things over because I've been sewing through my stash which means I've ended up with some cubby holes free so I've been able to move over my PDF and traced patterns into these cubby holes freeing up my Billy bookcase. So I have all my patterns stored in there. I used to store them by company and then by type but I've switched that up because I just have such a large collection that I wasn't really easily able to find what I was looking for with that storage method. So I've switched over to categories and then I have the patterns kind of in order of company within those categories. So I have outerwear, I have blazers, I have trench coats. I've gone really specific with the categories and I've used turquoise blue card with the name of the category written on the side of it. They used to be white cards which was a great idea until it dawned on me that the majority of the pattern envelopes were also white and so they weren't really sticking out. So for me turquoise blue worked really well. It's really obvious where a category starts and stops. Then I can find that category and then look through that section of patterns. This in theory works really well. Every now and again I will find a pattern that's in a different category and I'm like oh that should be over there. But that's usually because there are either multiple options of pattern. So it's like a wardrobe pattern for example the 6080 so that has jacket top and trousers and a bag in it now that one I have decided that I predominantly like the jacket so that one has gone in my bolero or cropped jacket section but that's a kind of a decision that you need to make although you can have a wardrobe category and I do have one of those for those multiple piece patterns that there's not one particular one that I like but I know that so in my head when I'm going for looking for that pattern I know to go to the wardrobe category of my collection. This works really really well for me and I am currently working my way through this collection and curating it down further. There's a bunch of pattern collection videos that you can find in this playlist and I'm just going through and kind of really 
being critical of the patterns that I've got and I think I've managed to not necessarily de-stash because they're still in the bag waiting to be de-stashed but I've gotten rid of about 150 patterns from my collection because they're either kind of duplicates or I like them but I like them because I've seen them on other people and they work really well on other people but I don't think they're going to work very well for me so that's another reason I haven't placed a simplicity order for a long time is because I'm trying to be much more thoughtful about the patterns that are coming into my collection and the ones that I will actually make up so and wear and love. So as you can probably tell, I absolutely love printed patterns and I think that they are the one that I have the most of, although I do have a lot of PDF patterns and in my head it's not as many as it probably is because they're all stored on my computer. I have separated them out into lingerie, bag and dressmaking patterns and then within those categories I have then gone further and put them into each company. So my PDFs are organised in the way that I used to store my paper patterns. For me this one works really well although it would be nice to have another storage folder or system where I have the types of clothing listed and the patterns stored under that as well because sometimes I forget certain tops and things that I've got from people like Charm Pattern because I'm a Patreon of Gertie's and I have been since the start so I have every single Patreon pattern that she's released and there's a bunch in there that I love and that I've just not gotten around to making because I kind of forget about them. I do tend to go to my paper patterns first. Things can get very overwhelming with PDF patterns and I at one point ended up having a pattern printed twice because I'd completely forgotten that I'd had it printed pre Previously. So now I also make a note next to the name of the pattern with a P in brackets to say that I've had that pattern printed so I don't make that mistake again. There are a bunch of different ways of using your PDF patterns. You can print them out for yourself at home on an A4 printer. If you're lucky enough to have an A0 printer you can do that at home. If I had the space and the money 100% I would have one of those. Might even use PDFs more often if I had that facility but I don't and I tend to get my patterns printed at net printers. They had closed for a while but they've opened back up again and I know there's a plethora of options out there. Something else that a lot of people are doing now is getting projectors and using those to project the pattern either directly onto the fabric or onto paper so they can trace it out that way. So there's a bunch of different options for getting your PDF from your computer into your grubby little mitt so that you can make that a pattern up. Personally, like I say, I prefer having things printed on A0 and whenever I have that done, I will now put a P next to the name of the pattern just so that I don't duplicate it. Ask me how. I know. But your PDF pattern has arrived. It happens to be a Camp Gertie pattern because as I say I have been a patron of hers since the start so I have a lot of these. What do you do with this once it's arrived? So for me I like to store my patterns in the Elba file folders. These I get from Amazon and I will link to a listing in the description down below. These are something that I have a lot of and if I had my own way I would have them in a uniform colour because I prefer that look but the listings that I usually find are for multiple different colours and for some reason they have different colours on different prices regularly so for me I will go to the listing when I'm in need of some file folders and I will go through and I will try all the different colours and buy the cheapest option. I used to have them in plastic wallets but I didn't like that as much they didn't have as much structure in them these are nice thick card also the plastic file folders have a certain kind of breaking point there's well, not, not necessarily breaking but storage capacity whereas these ones do have these I'll do I'll do a close-up that'll be better won't it they do have have like these scored areas on each of the three sides and then there's like a spine on this side as well so these will actually store some fairly chunky and hefty patterns and you all know the size of the skirts that I love so these work really really well for me. Somebody did point out that because I have so many different colours it would be really good to categorise say tops in cream which this is a top and this is a cream folder or you know skirts in blue it's a great idea but I have bought so many of these folders over the years that they have been used as they have been coming in. I didn't have the opportunity to kind of colour code them then because I only had like one or two colours. I tended to buy the blue and the purple. Now I have an entire rainbow of colours. The idea of going through and reorganising all of these patterns, reprinting stickers and things like that to organise them into types and then not be able to continue that organisation on because I couldn't get the 
the correct colour at the discounted price drives me nuts. So they are a random selection of different colours for different pattern types and I'm just living with the rainbow and enjoying the rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> the file folders come with a label on the side that's stuck down already. I use my friction pen to write on that because friction pen comes away with heat. So you can either rub or iron off the writing if you end up not wanting to keep the pattern that you've got in the envelope. And then I will print out a sticker and I will link to the sticker paper that I use as well. I go onto the internet, find the line drawings or the envelope art for whichever pattern it is going to be. I will print it out usually four to an A4 sheet on sticker paper cut them out and stick them on and that way I've got the name of the pattern but then I've also got a visual reference of what's in there and for me that's really really helpful I know I'm quite good at pattern numbers but every now and again I will one will just leave the brain area and I, I will completely blank on what it's called and having that little picture on the file folder really really helps for me so that's how I store my printed PDF patterns now these are expensive. I actually am a tracer. Lots of people always say, oh my gosh, I can't believe you add that extra layer of difficulty to or tedium to your dressmaking practice, but these are expensive. As much as the paper patterns are expensive, these are expensive, and I don't want to have to have this printed out again if I need to make a larger size than the smaller size that I've cut out or the size that I've cut out. So I will trace my PDF patterns as well. So I keep this pristine and then trace the pattern out for the size that I have wanted and then that way as well if I need to make any alterations or changes to the pattern I can do that on the traced copy and if anything goes wrong I have the original to come back to where I don't need to have it printed again. I will sometimes print out the instructions for this one I haven't I haven't made this one yet but it, it depends. Sometimes I will use my laptop for instructions. Sometimes I like having a written set of instructions because then I can make notes on the instructions as I go for the different changes that I've made or tweaks that I want to make or just notes that I have on the pattern as I'm working through it. Anyway, sorry, tracing. I was I went on a tangent then. I'm going to do an entire video on how and why I trace my patterns. So that's pretty much an explanation of why I do it. But I will show you how I do it and the different things that I use for tracing patterns because for me it's just the practice that I've gotten into thanks to By Hand London and I'm really grateful that I did. So once I've traced the pattern out then all of those trace pieces go into this folder as well. As you can imagine, especially with some of the dresses that I like to wear with the big floofy skirts, these can get very thick very quickly but everything goes into these file folders and that way I have everything in one place. So the file folders used to get stored in my Billy bookcase because you can adjust the shelves in that so it was these are A4 size and they fitted in there perfectly but as I say I have cleaned out some of the cubby holes behind me so I was able to move the file folders over into the cubby holes. The cubby holes I have behind me are Calyx units from Ikea. I just happened to have a bunch of Ikea furniture before I moved in here so I have utilized what I had. If I was starting from scratch an apothecary kind of like vibes would be going on back here because I'd have had things built specifically for the different things I wanted to store in them but Ikea Calyx units work really really well for me. The only thing with that is they are deeper than a traditional A4 or well, this is a bit slightly bigger than A4 but you get the pictures. So I also store my patterns <laughs> I also store my patterns in these magazine folders. I get these from WH Smith, I get them from Sainsbury's, Tesco's, that I just whenever I go in to one of the bigger stores that has a stationery department I will go over and have a look. Usually you can get these for two for four pounds. I have got a bunch of different prints, this is just one of them. One thing I will say, I bought some absolutely beautiful rose gold file folders. I bought four of them because I was just like, oh, shiny, I love them. And they don't fit these file folders in. These file folders are just that little too big to fit into those rose gold ones. Thankfully the rose gold ones will fit my sewing magazines perfectly so they have found a use and are being used but you do want to make sure if you're going to go down the magazine folder route that you are making sure that the magazine file folder that you get actually fits the Elba file folder that you store your patterns in. Again ask me how I know. Now, 
as I mentioned, I also trace out all of my printed patterns. So we've got the Vogue 8577 here, which as you know, is a very floofy skirt. So you can see this is quite a chunky folder. Any of my big four patterns, the big four pattern gets put back into the Billy bookcase, but it's traced counterpart goes into one of these file folders and then they get sorted into the magazine folders within categories. So I have my Vogue dresses, I have tops, I, ha I have woven tops, I have knitted tops, I have coats, I have bags, I have self-drafted patterns. Because I do have a fairly large chunk of self-drafted patterns, especially the different types of skirts that I love. So these will get put into a file folder as well. The file folder will get labeled and then that gets put into its own magazine folder so that I know all my self-drafted patterns for skirts are in that particular magazine folder. And it's all nice and tidy. This, this and the purple one are the colors that I really, really wish I could have every single one in. But again, it doesn't work like that. You have to go with the one that's on sale or on deal or that particular time. So don't be too precious about the colors. It ends up looking very pretty and you can always organize slightly more in, in the file folders if you want to. You'll notice that this one only has its label written on. It doesn't have a photo and that's because it's a self-drafted pattern. I mean, realistically, I could take one of my Instagram photos. There are many of me wearing the full circle skirt and half circle skirt. So I've got two patterns in here. Another reason why it's quite so chunky. So I could definitely put photographs of myself onto the file folder in the same way, print out a sticker and uh, just stick them on so that I have more of a visual reference. But I also know that anything that's self-drafted doesn't have a sticker on it. So it, 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 in my head, it kind of works. As you can see, I do have a lot of patterns in all of their different forms. And something I would like to do is put them into some kind of organization so I can easily flip through, especially my PDF patterns and see what I've got. I did take photos of all of my printed patterns a long time ago and I have got them on my phone in somewhat of an order but that's not actually the easiest thing to do. There are a bunch of different apps out there that work for this but I actually have and pay for a website, my own web dedicated kittenish behavior website and one of the functions that I can put on there is to upload my pattern library. I would like to do that because I think it could be quite helpful for me as I say to kind of categorize everything it's going to be a really long job I'm kind of excited and not excited about it I will definitely need to be in the right kind of mood but I would like to categorize it so that I could search by tops search by companies search by made or not made have all of that information there which is something I can do with my Squarespace website the other thing that I would like to do is have all of the patterns that I've done sew alongs for listed on there so that they are easily searchable and findable by you guys you can go to my website and be like oh have you done a sew along for the Vogue 9076 yet yes yes I have here is the pattern here is my review on it and here is the sew along finally done that one so I am at some point going to sit down and go through and catalog all of my patterns in that way so that I have a easy to access digital form I also think it's going to be really handy for when I go fabric shopping one of the things that I do recommend and if you watch my Goldhawk Road survival guide video you will know this is to take the pattern that you want to use along with you so say for example this one so that you have all the information on the back of how much fabric you're going to need if it's a knit pattern it'll have the stretch guide on the back so you can make sure that the fabric you're purchasing has got the right amount of stretch in it now obviously you can buy those little wooden rulers that have the stretch guide on that and that is a lot smaller than an entire stash of patterns in your bag especially when you will be taking home giant amounts of fabric so <laughs> I think that's something that I would like to invest in and then having my pattern stash on my phone to be able to go on and have a look at both the front and back of the pattern envelope the fabric requirements and search that way I think it's going to be something that's going to be really really handy so I am as I say eventually going to pluck up the courage and do that and I will probably end up doing it section by section I'm probably going to start with the pdfs because they're the ones that I have in the back of my head what I've got but I'm not 100% sure and it would be nice to have a visual reference to flick through the other thing you could do with that if you don't want to have your patterns on your phone is take photos and make yourself a lever arch file flip folder of the different patterns that you have you can take the photo of the front and the back you can make notes on it that way you could just take that 
you know the a4 plastic sleeve you could take that shopping with you so that you have all the information but again you're not taking the entire pattern you could accidentally leave a bag with somebody or a bag in a shop ask me how i know so you don't want to lose a pattern especially if it's an older pattern that's no longer in print so having a reference library of everything that you have especially if you have a stash as large as mine is probably a really really good idea and definitely something that i want to attempt to do in the future wish me luck <laughs> so this is my way of storing my patterns pdf printed self-drafted and it works for me i know there are hundreds of other different options out there of storage of you know organization all of those things let me know in the comments section down below what method you use if there's anything that you'd recommend if there's anything that i've said today that you might try and implement for yourself i'd be really interested to hear what you guys think so if you've enjoyed this video you might want to check out this one here